Hello again. Thank you for joining. Uh, a few weeks ago, I released this guy right here, which is the uh, automatic filament loader. Uh, it allows you to be in the middle of a long print and not run out of filament, uh, or you know, we have all those little pieces laying around. You want to use them, uh, and, but splicing them together, it's sometimes difficult. They break. Uh, it just isn't always practical, uh, but again with this device that uh, again a lot of you have probably hopefully have seen and have been interested enough to download it off of Colts. Um, this allows you to just load up another spool of filament uh, right behind the existing one and you don't even have to be there to uh, to interfa uh, interface with it. The, um, it's all automatic, it's spring-loaded, there's no firmware adjustments to make to your printer. As long as it can bolt onto your extruder and you can just make sure everything runs smoothly, it should work fine for you to just load up a new roll. Um, however, in the past couple weeks I've had a uh, things I wanted to improve upon because in, in making this device and putting it on various printers and extruders I realized that it doesn't always accommodate um, the space constraints. Mainly the plunger in the back, it's sometimes difficult to, um, well, you may not even have room for it because in a lot of cases the extruder mounts flat on the side of the printer in the case of the FL Sun Q5. Um, this plunger wouldn't work. Uh, the way I got it to work was I relocated my extruder high enough that this plunger sat above the printer. Um, but not everybody's going to want to open their chassis, drill some holes, remount their extruder. Uh, then again, if you're into the 3D printing world, you just might. Um, Anyway, so that was one aspect I wanted to change, uh, if I could. The other thing, and, and this was based on comments that other people gave me, is due to the height of it, uh, sometimes if they had their printer in an enclosure, it wouldn't fit. Uh, so I wanted to find a way to make it shorter. Uh, and the last thing that I wanted to uh, improve upon was, obviously with this device, that's under a decent amount of spring tension, and it's pressing down on what is a pretty stiff filament. Okay, so obviously as it goes down, the new filament comes down and presses it through. Well, one of the things I couldn't handle was soft filament, TPU, uh, because, let me just load this up. Sorry, with it not being mounted on a printer, it's a little, it's a two-handed operation to, to do it. Okay, so I've, um, I've loaded up this TPU filament. Well, what's going to happen? It just bows out to the side. It, it, there's not enough stiffness to the, to the um, filament to make it hold its shape. So, uh, I wanted to make a way to make that go away. And uh, so I've done that. No. And uh, it, it encompasses uh, a lot of the same features as the existing unit, but I've made a lot of improvements. Um, this is the unit right here. Uh, it's obviously considerably shorter than the old one. And uh, it also can work with flexible filament. It's flat on the back, so there's no need to worry about uh, relocating your extruder. Um, basically, the way this one works, it goes back to my original prototype, which uh, I have on, on YouTube where you can see it almost looks like a, uh, a whale, <laughs> um, where it uses a swing arm. And instead of having the plunger slide down, this swing arm here goes up and down, grabs the filament, and pushes it in an arc motion. Uh, but the, what's nice about this is the plunger now, although it still pushes the filament from behind, you, rele you actually relieve it from the front. So you push this button in, then you can set the new filament behind the old filament, uh, or the existing filament. So as this, uh, as this, here's the old filament running out, and there's the new filament coming through. What uh, the other advantage to this is, uh, now that I've got this arced enclosure that the filament rides in. Let me just load up a piece of TPU. So I'm just sitting in there, and as you can, let's see if I can get close enough to show this. Um, again, the the little flip lever. Oops, sorry, there we go. The little flip lever that uh, grabs the filament when the arm comes all the way down it's automatically pushed out of the way so it doesn't drag on the filament. So in this case now, I push in on this plunger and then I can insert the new filament behind the running filament and as you can see it's it's held in place. Then when I raise up the swing arm the flexible filament is pushed outward but it's pushed against this channel way and that keeps it from, uh, from bending or bowing out of the way and as I pull the old filament out there's the new filament coming in right behind it. So, uh, much smaller, what do they say, smaller, cheaper, faster, better? Uh, well, this guy is uh, 
It's completely different redesign. Uh, I spent a lot of time to get it uh, really where I want it. Uh, it takes a lot less effort to clean it up and do the assembly. I probably re-engineered it about 10 times to try to just get the tolerances down to where just a light minor filing cleanup with uh, a file and a little sandpaper. And uh, with all the necessary parts, you can just put this thing together in about half hour and clean it up or, you know, smooth up the, the filament path. Um, I'm also going to include a explosive view diagram of, of the entire mechanism, how it goes together, all the parts, um, screws, nuts, bolts, uh, brass inserts, springs, everything will be uh, listed on the diagram. So uh, I'm going to uh, shut this video off now. I'm going to turn the camera down on the bench and I'm going to just assemble this video or assemble the unit for you like I did in the past video uh, in real time. You can skip through when you when you feel you don't need to pay attention to it, um, but if there's anything you want to, you know, just pause it and take a look at uh, how I'm putting it together. Anyway, till then, see you later.